My name is Ben Drury and I work at Drury's on the Isle of Man. Gary Milne and I work at Braid Barbers in Milton Keynes. I, I enjoy being a barber because it gives me the freedom, but a bit of discipline and I have to be strict with myself, you know, and, but I set my own boundaries all, at all times. I'm my own boss. It's, um, it's opened up a lot of doors to me, such as coming back to LSB, for the barber bash, there's all sorts of stuff that's open for me. Yeah, I just think it's one of the last kind of jobs that's still the way it should have been, or the, the way it should have stayed. You know, loads of jobs have changed so much or don't exist anymore. You know, the jobs that people were like, oh, I wish there, there was still this type of job that I could go and do and just have fun all day. And You know, they're, they're either non-existent or they're not like that anymore, or you can't make a living at it. Um, Barbering's the last one that's just stayed as it always should have been. You know, we just have fun all day. Being your own boss is great. It's good not having to have someone else calling the shots and you could, you, you've got that sense of freedom, like I said before, where you can set your boundaries and you can create your own image for what you want for yourself, for your staff, for what you want to have on my, like, I just say it's my island, but I come from the island, man, we're quite protective over it, it's very small. And I, I can kind of target things that I would like to have seen previously that I can now do because I'm in that position where I can influence certain things. We chat to people, meet new people, we have a conversation for half an hour. You know, I'm just, I get paid to chat to people. I just cut air when I'm doing it. Creative wise, I feel like barbering compared to, say, fashion, makeup, even hairdressing. We, we have our own thing going and, and barbers can create their own sense of community and if it's done in the right way it can be a very constructive thing. I like the way it's, it can be everything because a lot of creative jobs you know you will spend years doing for no money and have to do another job like I was doing with music. So I was spending all night doing music and all day working in a lab which I hated. Now when I get excited and I come up with new ideas and I'm, you know, I'm really inspired, I go into the shop and I do the same thing as I do when I do my day job. I think with the, it, it can be turned into a bit of a click. Whether you're in the click or not, I'm not sure, but most barbers who just love doing the job for the job will not surround themselves with that sort of environment anyway. And they're the ones that I like to hang around with and associate myself with. Just like-minded people, you know, there's no, there's no egos that are left away somewhere and I've got no time for that myself anyway. Once you, I think once you become a barber, if you're driven enough, you will create your own opportunities. Um, you speak to the right people, you put yourself out there, you network, you speak to, you know, like I have with Gary today, you know, we've never met before but you know, we've, we've, we chat and we'll probably always keep in touch now. It depends if you create the opportunities for yourself, anything's there for you to, for the taking. There's guys I know that, you know, it go as far as cutting footballers hair or on stage for tours for, for, for musicians. So if, if you, yeah, if you, if you want to work hard enough and you, and you know what direction or what path you want to go in, then it opens up a lot of doors for you, but you have to be willing to work for it. You can make barbering what you want. It's it's all it, a, lot, a lot of it is about flexibility and choice. There's you know there's five barber shops on most high streets. There's you will fit into one of them if you like you know to be if you're a perfectionist and you don't want to you know sit and have fun all day like I do. There will be a barber shop like that. If you don't want to work in a barber shop and you want to go off mobile or go travelling as a travelling barber and you, you, if you want to do that, do it. You know, no one's forcing you to go in a barbershop. If you have your own ideas, then run with them. You feel like you're helping people. You know, when, when they've you know, been to a lot of barbershops and they've never quite got their hair looking the way they've wanted it, and you manage it, and they have like this light bulb moment. moment. You know, you feel like, you're, like their sort of confidence is down to you. I'm motivated every day in my industry, which is barbering, mainly because 
I'll probably do something that I didn't do the day before. Um, I could a door could open for me that wasn't there yesterday. You know, um, I can meet new people, and I can cut people's hair. A lot of people in our shop cut hair very different ways. So, if a customer comes in, you can almost tell straight away, oh, he's gonna he's gonna wait for this person. And yeah, you know, everyone has their type of customers, which is probably why we have such a varied mix of customers. So if they're returning to me, I'm really motivated. You know, my main motivation is keep it consistent, make them feel like, you know, that they're always going to be in safe hands. They, they can just switch off and have a chat because they know they're going to get the amazing haircut they had last time. If you want barbering to be a trade for life, where you can take it anywhere with you with a small bag, you can go around the world and make money. Um, and you can do that until you're too old to travel, but you won't be too old to cut hair. You can come back home. There's no, there's no time limit on it, it's up to you. If, if you're passionate enough and you're willing to work hard, you'll prolong your career as much as you want it to be. If you want to call it a day early, then that's completely up to you. But it's, that's, that's, that's something that's different for every single barber. If you want to do, you know, be a barber and maybe think in the future do something else, but you still want to cut hair on the side, you can. If you want to go a completely different direction, you can. If you want to stay a barber for the rest of your life, you can. We have an apprentice who's a qualified welder. Um, apparently been offered some jobs to really good money and I said to him, you know, why are you doing this if you could be off earning that amount? Um, and he started explaining it, I'm like, you want to do something you're happy doing? And he's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I thought so. Uh, we had a guy, someone who used to sell fish. Uh, someone I think used to be a teacher's assistant. Uh, someone's just spent their life doing odd jobs. Uh, one used to be a labourer. I think some jobs are be becoming too common and some people are seeing now that everyone's doing the same thing and none of them are happy for it. Um, so they start to look at what, you know, what do I really want to do? What's just a normal job that I would be legitimately happy doing? Um, and there's a lot, a high percentage of them will land at Barbering. If you suggest it, if you just suggest it to someone who's never thought about it, actually think about the kind of lifestyle you'll be living a lot of people will go, yeah, being a barber's cool. With places like London School of Barbering, there is a structure that doesn't have to take four or five years of your life. If it's done in the right way, there's no reason why it can't work. You do hear people say nine week courses, 12 week courses aren't the best thing in the world, I'm not gonna lie. But you can't say that unless you've been and you've done it as I have, as Gary has. You know, we're the ones that can speak for it and we've done it firsthand. hand.